Hey there, Dev Squad, Manuel here. In this video, we're gonna continue modeling the lamp. In the past video, we modeled the base and we talked about the basics. So let's move on. I'm actually gonna make a clone of this box. You can make another box here. If you wanna go to the primitives tabs, if you're in 3 Studio Max, I'm just going to clone this by holding shift and dragging it to the side and I'm going to convert it to editable poly I already have a default shortcut for that but just to remind you just go here convert to editable poly and let me just make this smaller so I'm just going to grab this poly and move it into the z-axis move it down and now I'm just going to center this and remember we just center it by going into our coordinates down here and we just click on these arrows and we are in the center of the universe so we'll just bring it up and this is one of those cases where it's really important to keep things in the center of the universe because since we have two pieces then it's going to be even easier to line them up if they're both at the same point so let me bring this up over here and we're going to make this box way smaller than what it is right now i'm just going to grab my scale tool Grab all the vertices and I make it very small. Get out of this mode and actually now we have moved the pivot. So I'm actually going to go back because I want to keep the pivot where it is. So instead of scaling it uniformly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale in the Y and the Z. And the reason why I don't want to change the pivot is because it's very comfortable just to move it from the bottom. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to grab all my vertices and just scale it down this way. And let me see, maybe I'm going to scale it up a little bit this way. All right. So now I'm just going to put this down and I'm not going to clip it yet. One of the things I'm going to do, just like what I did with the cylinder, is I'm going to remove the caps. I'm going to remove the cap here and the cap here, just to make things easier for modeling purposes. And I'm going to bring this down and clip it over here. What I mean by clip is when one piece of geometry is going through the other. Okay, just clipping over here. And again, let's do some small modeling around here. All right, I'm actually going to go into the front view so it's much easier. So I'm just going to put this straight up and I go to my border mode and I'm going to hold shift and extrude another piece of geometry. Go to my scale tool and from the center. So we're going to scale it uniformly out this way. Go back to my move tool. I'm pressing W to go back to my move tool and R to go to scale tool. So we take this out this way, not so far. Actually going to bring this down a little bit because this is pretty much what's holding the lamp. And I think this may be a little bit too large just for the lower part of the lamp. So I'm just going to make it smaller this way, a little bit this way, a little bit more this way, just so it's squared. All right, so we're not going to keep going. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shoot this all the way up. And we might end up with a little bit uh, of a bigger lamp than what I thought in the beginning, but that's fine. We can always readjust uh, later on. I just need the scale for reference to see that I'm not going way too high or way too low. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to scale it uniformly out this way. Actually, before doing that, we need to do an extrusion. So just select all of those, go to extrude. I'm using the menu with the drop down here. And you can see it goes back to extruding out from the groups. So I'm just gonna click here and put it to the normals. And I think that was a little bit too much. So I have to play with my numbers here, maybe around here is enough. There you go. 
So let's just run that number to three. Okay, one of the things uh, we need to do is whenever you extrude something like this, it also creates geometry on the top. So I like to not have caps for the moment, so I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna go back to my front view by pressing the letter F, and I'm going to widen this up, always uniformly from the center, and we're gonna keep on modeling. So I'm gonna get my border, I'm going to extrude one piece, I'm going to extrude another piece, and I'm going to get this and extrude it out with the drop down menu. Again, let's do 3.4. And again, th these are just values that I've determined before. You can input your own values depending on what kind of lamp you're doing. So I'm just gonna go around and again, when you hold shift, it goes around the circle and it selects all those polygons so we can delete them. And I'm going to keep going up. So let's see. Maybe we need to do one here. Actually, before we do that, I think we actually, let me go back. I want to keep this because if you look at all these Victorian lamps, they usually have kind of like something holding the top of the cone. So I'm going to keep this one for the moment. I'm actually going to make a little bit smaller and I'm going to extrude from here. So I'm gonna, now that I've extruded a little bit, I can go back to my front view. I'm going to do a cone in two parts, one and two. And now we're just going to create that cone. So in order for us to do that, I'm actually going to select my edge mode. If you're in 3D Studio Max and you double click an edge, we'll select that whole loop. So I'm gonna go back to my scale tool and I'm going to scale it inwards with the X and Y axis. I'm gonna do the same thing on top with the bordered mode. And it's going to give me that cone that I'm looking for. So let me readjust this one right here. And you can make it, if you wanna make it an actual pyramid, you can delete that edge. I want to give it a little bit more definition and a little bit more stylization. So that's why I'm adding this side right here. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we need to create the, like the little tippy top that you can see in these lamps. So for that, we're just going to extrude twice. So go to the front view, extrude one and two. And we're just going to select that and do kind of like the same thing we did with the cone, but the other way. So I'm just going to put it out and I'm going to put this one in. But before we do that, we need to shape this a little bit more. It's way too boxy and these edges are too sharp. The way we're going to do that is doing an operation that's really common in 3D modeling. It's called chamfering. So there are some operations that you'll see that are very common in this tutorial and many of the courses that I make and overall in any uh, 3D modeling aspect. And usually those are either extrude, chamfer, bridge. Uh, those are the most common um, operations that you'll see people doing when doing 3D modeling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select that whole thing and I'm going to press ring. This is going to select all the edges around so I don't have to click on them. So I'm gonna click on ring. And as you can see, that selected all the edges around. And I'm going to go into the chamfer command, but I'm not going to press that button because again, then I will have to eye it up and I like to use the numbers. So I'll do that. And as you can see, it instantly gives me something which it's actually not that bad, but let's increase it a little bit more for stylization purposes. I'm actually going to do 1.6. Yeah, I think that value is okay. So we see that we have something really bad going here. And the reason why it's doing this is because it's stretching the chamfering so far that's crossing over the other vertices. 
So in order to remedy that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to deselect all of these edges. Okay, we're going to take these edges later on, but for now, let's just chamfer this. I'm going to click OK. And now we're going to chamfer this. I'm going to chamfer these edges separate from the TP top because uh, since this part is much more narrow than this part over here, whenever a number I input over here, it's going to affect this side more. So let's just do them separately. It's going to be much easier. So I'm just going to go like this. And that rectangle selection is going to allow me to select all those edges. I'm going to go to chamfer, and as you can see, that's a lot. So I'm going to reduce that to 0 0.7. Maybe let's try 0. Um, let's just try 1. So again, 1 is almost crossing the line. So let's just try 0 0.8. Click OK. And now we have created n-gons for the first time in this tutorial we have created n-gons by modeling and this while this is not going to affect it too much i always recommend that if you don't need the n-gons take them out it's going to be easier in the long run later on so now that we have this n-gons right here we need to get rid of them now in order to get rid of those n-gons we're going to be using something called target weld so what target weld does first of all weld. this operation means that I'm going to literally weld one vertice to another one and we're going to end up with just one vertice the reason why I want to use target is because this is the operation that allows me to weld from one vertice to the second one so I press target weld, and then I select my first vertice and I get this rubber band and then I go to my second vertice and as you can see, now we only have one vertice. So I'm going to do this all around. All right. As you can see, we don't have end guns anymore. So we're going to chamfer the top. Again, I'm just going to go like this. Make sure I grab all the edges. And well, from the looks of it, 0.8 was OK. So I'm just going to go like this, click OK, and I'm going to target weld all these vertices. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to rescale it down until we make kind of like point, but I'm not going to make it pointy. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to take one edge. So I'm extruding one edge. And by the way, if you're wondering how I'm zooming in, I hold control and alt and I click on the middle mouse button and I can zoom in. So I extruded one edge just by holding shift and using the scale tool right here. I extrude a second edge and then I click collapse just like we did the other time because this needs to be closed. All right, excellent. So what I'm going to do now is get the faces for our lamps. So I'm just going to, before we get the faces of our lamp, I'm actually going to add a loop here. This is another nice tool that we have here in 3 Studio Max, and you'll have a similar one in Maya. Swift loop, it just creates a loop of edges all around uh, your model. So if I had N-Gons here, this will not go all the way around. So this is why it's important to always have quads as much as you can. You can have tries, but the problem is if you have tries or end guns, this is not going to go all the way around. So this is one of the reasons why I try to keep all quads. Now I'm going to select these specific faces. I'm just going to go around and I'm going to use another command. It's called inset. 
what inset does is it creates new geometry on the inside of those polygons. So I'm going to go like this. And right now, if I drop down, there's by group, which it's actually not doing anything in particular right now. But I'll keep it by polygon because we want to inset each and every single polygon. So I'm going to go with 1.2. I'm going to click OK. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bevel. The reason why I'm beveling is because I don't want to leave these uh, too flat. I just want to make this asset a lot more interesting. So I'm just going to bevel this inwards. All right. So let's say minus 1.2. And for the actual beveling part, what I'm going to do is minus 0 0.5. And this is going to create a lot more distance in between these two. So I'm liking already how this is looking. I'm going to click OK. And this is the head of our lamp. OK, uh, now let's make some changes around here. So I want to make this a little bit more inwards, kind of like it looks like it's beveled. So I'm going to go into the front view by pressing F and I'm going to do this. So scale it inwards. And in order for this to look a lot better, I'm just going to select these row of polygons. So hold shift, click next to it, and we're going to take it out. Actually, instead of doing it here in the front, what we can do is go here, the perspective view, and do it in the X and Y. And it's going to give us much better result. The Victorian lamps usually have uh, three lamps on them. If you want, you can stop here and you already have a lamp. This is one way, but the reference that I'm using has that three lamp, kind of like a chandelier. So I'm going to put this away just to have a, so I have more space and I'm going to go into my front view because we're pretty much done with the modeling of the lamp per se. And what I'm going to do so I'm going to clone it by holding shift and I'm going to put it down a little bit and reduce its size. We're going to scale it in uh, uniformly over here just to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to put it here. I'm just going to create one. And because this one is over here, and this is one of the reasons why I haven't closed that cap is because we need to model this bottom piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to widen this part up. So it's a little bit different from this one. And I'm going to go into my front view. And I'm going to create a couple of parts. So I'm going to extrude this. Pull it inwards this way. I'm going to extrude another piece. Let's extrude one more piece and we'll pull it inwards. And one more piece. And this will be and one more piece. All right, now let's extrude this one and a second time collapse it. And now we have the bottom part of our lamp. So in order for us to connect this, we could model it with a box, but that would be difficult. So there are several ways to achieve this. Uh, one of the ways that I like to use whenever I have to do kind of like wiggly shapes is I would use splines as opposed to use primitives. The reason why I would use splines is because I can control their direction easier than I can do with other types of primitives. So I'm just going to go into the spline tab. It's right next to the primitives. And I'm going to select line. I'm going to go into the front view by pressing the letter F. 
and I'm going to mark kind of like where would I want this to go okay and right click to finalize the creation and we can go and edit it so let's see this may not be very smooth but we'll smooth this out in one second so I'm just going to rearrange all these parts and one of the nice things about 3D Studio Max is that we can turn the spline into geometry so all I'm going to do is go into the rendering tab click on enable in viewport and as you can see that created some nice geometry for me I'm just going to increase the thickness of course this is looking uh, actually very very jaggy so one of the things we can do is actually we can delete one of these actually bring this one down this way bring this one more towards the center and the other thing that we can do is we can smooth them out so I'm going to select these vertices I'm not going to select the ones on the ends I'm going to select all these in between and I'm going to right click and you can see here that corner is checked I'm going to go into smooth very self-explanatory and as you can see that smooth things out so now there's some rearranging that we need to do over here let's see how this looks and one of the things that I will be doing is reducing the amount of sides so let's say six sides and let's uh, keep on checking so I'm going to go to F3 F3 is wireframe mode I'm just going to bring this down and I'm going to bring this down as well just so it looks like this and maybe increase the thickness so 4.2 there you go uh, maybe just four okay so I want to make it look as if it's going into one face over here and same deal over here alright the thing about this splines though is that it does create a lot of geometry so another thing that we can do is we can convert this to an editable poly and we can remove some of the geometry make it a little bit more to the style that we're modeling so I'm going to select and as you can see every time I double click it selects the whole ring I'm just gonna delete those so as you can see that makes it very straight and I'm gonna delete every other piece There you go so as you can see that keeps the form but it reduces the geometry a little bit so I'm gonna keep on deleting these and I'm gonna get rid of these too all right and in order for this to be a little bit more straight I'm just going to bring it up I'm gonna bring up these as well get out of wireframe mode and we have a ton here that we didn't erase so I'm just gonna get these two alright and if you want to make this certain parts more straight I would do this just so it's not a complete curve all around and actually I'm gonna leave that one over there and let me see I'm just going to delete one from here and one from here there you go now we have some nice nice looking handle for this lamp
and we can even make it smaller although I if we make it smaller then we'll make this handle to way too wide so I think I'm gonna leave it the way that it is so it's a little bit smaller than the main lamp but it's not completely small so what we can do is we can attach and this is where this element mode comes into play and you'll see later why what I'm going to do is go here to attach and then I'm just going to click on the handle now that we've attached both meshes this becomes one single mesh and this single mesh is now composed by different elements this video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.